Hey guys, this is John from H&W. Uh, today we're going to go over installing a two-axis Accurite readout on, this is a bridge port, but it'll work on most emails. Uh, so we're going to go over tips, tricks, things you have to do to make your uh, digital readout work as perfectly as it should. Uh, we've got laid out here everything that you're uh, going to need for the install. With each kit you buy, more than what you see is what uh, comes with the kit. But everything comes uh, with all the hardware, nuts, bolts, screws, set screws, everything you need. And then I've also laid out the tools uh, that you're going to need to get the install done. Uh, so first thing I like to do is I like to start with the Y axis. So the first thing we're going to grab is not that. With most bridge ports, in knee mills, you have pre drill and tap holes in your knee. All of the Accurite kits come with helicoils to take them from the holes that are drilled and tapped to quarter 20s. Now this mill already has the helicoils here in the, uh, in the holes. That was what this little tool is for, is to be able to get your helicoils in and out, we'll get the heel coil in so that you can uh, mount your uh, backup spar to it. So we don't have to do this because these ones are already done. So then we're going to grab our backup spar, our spacers, and our quarter 20 screws. So what you're going to do is use the provided hardware and get it kind of started in each one of the the front and back holes. Now this part can get where uh, people get into trouble with. Just because there's a hole doesn't mean everything lines up perfect. You can see we got a lot of play here. So we need to get these in the center so that we can indicate it in. Accurite scales have to be flat and parallel within 10 thou from end to end. So every time you mount one of these, we're going to indicate off the top of the backup spar and off the side of the backup spar to make sure we're within tolerance. If you don't get this intolerance, your scale will work for a little bit and then it'll die. And that's not what anybody wants. So I've got these, uh, our quarter 20s kind of tightened and kind of in the middle as far as I can get. And then we're just gonna go back and forth to make sure that we are flat within 10 thou. You should very easily be able to get your scale flat uh, within about three to five thou. So we can already see that we're getting, we're going to be way out of tolerance, but that's why we didn't secure everything completely. So here, all we got to do is loosen this back guy up. Get it close. And we just go back and forth. All right, so we got that at about four. Now, even though this is within tolerance, the flatter you have your scale, the uh, more accurate your readings will be on your readout. So try and get it, get it as close as you can. Like I said, anything within three or five is, 
is real good. You're gonna be sitting real pretty there. So that's at about two. Let's see how it is when we get back down. I'm pretty stoked with those numbers. The way the scale mounts to the backup spar is with these three set screws that come in the top holes on the backup spar. So I just like to get these started. You can have put these in before you mounted the backup spar, don't matter. All right, so now we're gonna put our scale in. Now one thing to remember, never throw these red clips away. These are super, super important, not just for install, but also for any issues you might have in the future. So once you take them out, go ahead and uh, put them in your toolbox or your desk or somewhere safe that you'll remember where they're at because you might need them in the future. All right, so if you have a, uh, a name brand knee mill, like a Bridgeport or a Lagoon or Sharp, you're gonna get a bracket that comes in one piece. If you get a universal mounting kit or your, your brand mill doesn't have a kit for it, you'll get a couple, piece, a couple brackets that you're gonna have to make work for your mill. So. so this is where the red clips come in and are very, very important. How the reader head is sitting now is how it should sit when you're done installing it. So we need to be able to make sure we're good here. And then we're also gonna use set screws. I don't know if you can get on the side. We're gonna use set screws that are provided in the kit to make up this distance right here, okay? All right, so what I like to use on this one, the, each kit, each kit comes with two with a set of two different size A32s. On the Y axis, typically you'll use the longer screws to make up for that space in here. So what I like to do is get these, get these screws started. Might have to loosen this back up. And get these torqued down. I like to be able to do this. Make sure you got that room and that screw and then get these kind of centered in those slots. Now each bag comes with five set screws. You only need three. And this is how we're gonna get the offset and the spacing between the uh, reader head and the, the, the mounting bracket. Now I like to use just my two fingers when I'm tightening these because we can't over torque it. If you over torque it, you'll scratch the inside of the glass and you'll ruin it. Now you can see that my fingers are slipping because we're about tight. One way to check that is just push and see if the reader head moves. It looks pretty good right there. All right, so we got all three set screws in there good. Just come over here. Now one thing you'll see, one thing why I say to use just your fingers like that, is watch when you over tighten, you'll see the bottom of that reader head pushing out, and that's not good. So if you ever see that your reader head's not flush like this, just loosen it, and get that set screw realigned right there. You can push, oh, we're a little low up here. There, that's looking a lot better. So the last trick, obviously do these offsets so that you don't over torque one and pull it out. But as you're tightening down, look to see if the reader head gets sucked in or pulled into the bracket. You can see right here, it came down at the bottom So we're gonna loosen that up a little bit. 
and tighten that set screw just a hair. So now to get the reader or the red clips out, I just use the Allen screw they give you, kind of wiggle it on out. You should be able to slide these red clips right back into the reader head if it is mounted correctly. So always keep these red clips somewhere where you can get to them. They're marked one and two and A and B. And those numbers and letters correlate in each of the corners of the uh, reader head so you know where they go. So that is how you do the Y axis on an Accurite. And we'll get ready and we'll do the X real quick. So now we're moving on to the X axis. Now on this bridge port that we rebuilt, there's obviously a bunch of already pre-Jordan tapped holes. So we'll see what we got to do here. These are two of the most important things that you need uh, for the x-axis. We use these as a trick to get the scale already mostly flat for when we are going to transfer our holes. And we just use these. I'm going to set them right on here and that's going to get us real close to flat. We'll see how these holes are. Alright, so those holes seem to line up. Again, we need to get these flat within 10 thou. If you have it off of 10 thou, you will run into issues. Now just to show you guys what I mean, if you guys already have quote unquote pre drilled and tapped holes, we got a lot of play in here. That's what, 30, 35 thou play right there. So just because they're pre-drilled and tapped holes doesn't mean you don't, uh, you don't indicate it in. You always got to indicate it in to get it flat. Now, when you're doing this, you're going to have a big dip in the middle and we're going to show you how to correct that via some hardware they send you in the kit. All right, so we got that pretty close, but one thing we should do is indicate over where the reader head's actually gonna sit. So we'll do our final checks this way. So you see we got that low dip right here in the center and that hole is pre-drilled and tapped for a reason. It's not going to be there in every table, but we will utilize it. All right, that is looking pretty sweet. So what I'm talking about with this hole right here once I get back to it. This hole right here utilizes this little bracket right here. This little tip, I don't know if you can see it. This will sit right in this groove right here. It comes with either a, uh, I think it's a 3 8 16 or a quarter 20 screw. I like the quarter 20. And what this does is it allows you, typically on scales 36 inches and longer, you can, you can move that so that there's no dip in the, uh, in the scale so you don't lose any accuracy. Now, one thing to watch when you're tightening this is as it catches the bracket, you don't want the bracket to twist because it'll actually bend the scale. So make sure as you're tightening it, you're trying to hold it pretty steady and just very, very gently tighten it so that you're not 
torquing the whole, uh, the whole scale. All right, next we gotta mount the reader head. All right, we already got two holes in there. Again, just utilizing the 32 screws that came with it. Now, one thing you'll notice is that on the Y-axis reader head, it was flush with the housing of the scale. On this side, it's indented. The reader head is not the same thickness as the housing. So, knowing that this is freshly rebuilt, we know that this is flat between the table and the saddle. If your saddle and table are not flat, you shouldn't mount it this way. We should flip the scale. Uh, most knee mills are like this though, where it's, where it's flat. So we don't need to utilize the set screws on this one. The last thing to do whenever you are installing one of these is you gotta worry about someone crashing your scale. And Accurate I'd already thought of that. We've got a bracket here that is thicker than the uh, housing of your scale. So what we're gonna do is you mount this directly above your dovetail so that it hits uh, the dovetail of your knee or of your column before it destroys anything. So this is another hole you'll have to transfer and draw and tap. It comes with a quarter 20 screw. This way, you will not, uh, you won't crash your scale. And there, we're not, not hitting the housing and we're stopped. So that is a quick down and dirty on how to do a XY Accurite readout system on your bridge port minus the arm and the DRO. So if you guys got any questions, give us a call at 800-285-5271. Thanks.